On a winter's day in Sydney, Belle Shakespeare is deep in rehearsal for their upcoming show, Much Ado About Nothing. As he turns his back, then you guys come down and then... Oh, so check down. <laughs> this play is 421 years old. But somehow, each time we approach it, it seems to have a fresh resonance. It's, it's some sort of Shakespearean magic trick where he seems to have planted little things in the play that almost pop up with each generation as, it, as it's done over and over again. So at the moment, what's really resonating with this play is this kind of ultra-masculine bro culture that happens in the world of the play and the impact that has on the young women in the play. It's a romantic comedy with a sort of tragic heart. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviours to love, shall, after he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. So you're so, so lucky to have all this connection with the audience. I mean, it's like a, like a cheat for Ben Big. It's usually the villains who get this, so you're, you're, it's, it's such a great moment. Just, just play with them, pick people out of the audience. They can be the wise and the virtuous ones and just, just use them, you know? The relationship between the artistic director and the director of the production is a slightly delicate one. And I've learned that you make the decision on who directs the play and then you trust that. Bell Shakespeare was started by John 30 years ago. And the mission has always been the same. Go as far and wide and make Shakespeare available to all Australians. The idea is that what we do at the Opera House, we then do all over the country. Orange Civic Theatre services a really large population of upwards of 200,000 people. People will travel up to two and three hours to come to see performances, especially if it's something that is really special. The relationship with Bell and Orange started in 1999. They now start their national tour from Orange. Come here, Leonardo. What was it you told me of today? When you leave the rehearsal room, you think, OK, we're, we're pretty good, but the voices are a bit different in the space. Where the lights are, perhaps might change the blocking a little bit, or the set just slightly different in the space. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important that you, everyone stays in a really good mood, because it's long. It's a couple of days of kind of grinding through the play. Can we just practice coming off? We've never come off this way. But there's a finishing line, and that's when that first audience arrives. And it doesn't matter how many years you've been doing this for, it's always scary. It's always nerve-wracking when that first audience arrives. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jests. I play um, Don John, also described as the bastard. He's, he's a fun villain to play. The daughter of Leonardo. He's got a great introductory this is me scene. I would rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. And he's talking about his, his relationship to his brother at that point. So he would rather be uh, an, an all consuming weed than a rose that blooms with respect and love in his presence. Yeah. <laughs> It were good that Benedict knew of it by some other, if she will not discover it. To, to what end? He would make but a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. And he should. It were an arms to hang him. The costumes are much to do. James and I were really keen to keep it really summery. She's an excellent, sweet lady. And we really wanted to keep it sort of cool, calm, suave and slightly expensive for a lot of the characters as well. I am sorry. We have a lot of cream and a lot of white. Lots of florals on a lot of the characters, if you've probably noticed. I tried to get as much floral into the show as possible. Be you constant in the accusation and my cunning so much shame me! <laughs> I will presently go learn the day of marriage. A lot of ankle acting with some of the guys. I think you've probably noticed a lot of the suits are sort of short with that no sock look. And lots of loafers.
finally get my little dream of a little bit of Tony Soprano. This costume, in contrast to a lot of the other men and women as well, is bland in colour, so there's no colour. So the rest is sort of vibrant Mediterranean sort of look and I think the darkness of this is just supposed to speak of Don John's melancholy. And this does it, no acting required. <laughs> Apparently it's one of the largest touring sets that Bell Shakespeare has toured with, so hopefully that all goes to plan. Don't have workshop facilities, so we've got to kind of make what we can. You've got to have a fair bit of patience to sort of do this and just take things as they come. Originally the set was going to be five metres tall, uh, but some of the venues we go to Aren't, the proscenium isn't five metres high, so you're actually not going to see the whole set if it's that high. So we found a sort of middle ground to go to four metres, which is going to look good in all the venues we play in. It's 26 this year, I believe. We wanted something that could encapsulate a couple of different areas. It's outside and it's inside, in the nighttime, daytime. So we went for something that was slightly evocative of a high-class mansion or an expensive bar. Slight playgrounds of the rich and famous. With the backdrop, we want to suggest that sort of lush vegetation that you get, sort of like a tropical holiday. So we did a custom printed drape with sort of a watercolour artwork. It was actually quite a fun exercise. Also an easy way to have a permeable back wall for the set that the actors can just sort of duck in and duck out of. It is so. Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonardo. Yay, my lord. Yeah, it's not supposed to fall down. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. In the rehearsal room, it was fine because they didn't actually have a curtain. Uh, but when they walk through the curtain, they're stepping straight down onto some treads and down through a curtain step. into an abyss. Yes, yeah, yeah. the step of death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're building a little platform to extend that for them. There's so many nerves involved when you go out to do a show, so you just want to kind of make sure that your instrument is nice and relaxed and loose and ready to work. Yeah. I always do a physical warm up stretches, strengthening, uh, and then my big warm-up is vocal, which is often very physical as well, but the voice is such a big part of what we do on stage. I had one yesterday that was a Velcro thingy for Hatch. The costumes uh, for opening night are really, really close now. So there's still always a lot of fiddly work on quick changes for some of the characters, so you need to add press studs here or elastic into shoelaces, or just check things aren't fitting right with some of the actions they're doing. For instance, Claudio's other character has a dragging theme, so we had to re-choreograph it so he gets picked up because his costume is starting to disintegrate. And I could wish he would modestly examine himself to see how much he is unworthy, so good a lady. Oh, come on! <laughs> We're really ready for an audience now because our, our leading actors are being very funny, but no one's laughing at them anymore. <laughs> so. Programs. I've seen it before, and I know, they, know they play quite well, so it'll be interested to see what spin they put on it. It's great to have such opportunities, you know, and only five minutes from home. <laughs> New South Wales is going through a really tough time now with the drought, and it's really important that people get entertained to escape the day-to-day -day life. I'm an English teacher, um, so, yeah, I love, I love Shakespeare. Much Ado About Nothing is one of my top three favourite Shakespeare plays. Beatrice? My f yeah, OK. <laughs> She's just strong. Like, that's the one thing that, like, stuck with me. She's pretty, like... She knows what she wants, and that's, like, something that, like, everyone wants to achieve, you know? It's funny, and it's, it's got drama, and it's got romance, and it's everything you want in a play. We're going to learn a lot tonight yeah. and tomorrow night. Yeah. And there'll be uh, 
lost my work to do. Because the audience is like a really crucial final piece of the puzzle, and, and once they're in place, then the show adjusts around them in a way, doesn't it? Mm, mm. With a comedy especially. Yeah, this is a really kind of nerve-wracking, but also kind of exciting yeah, kind that's of right. thing. Yeah, and because comedy is brutal like that, I mean, if they don't laugh, then it, it didn't work. Bum, 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 bum.